this drawing that was already done for a client. Now, the drawing looks a little bit blank, at least to my eye, it, it is crying out for some kind of uh, human figures to give it a little bit of life and to allow people looking at it to project themselves into the room. Now, in drawing figures, I often use this turpentine brush because I like how it generates a certain number of accidents while you're drawing. You know, and sometimes these accidents suggest things to me like facial features. or whatever. So just to look at that, you can see that uh, for, for one brush, it really is creating some interesting effects. And then depending on how small you make it, it can suddenly suggest to you who knows what. Maybe this is a hairstyle of somebody up here. And um, by selectively erasing, you can uh, get some happy accidents here. So here's a, a person that is suddenly looking this way. And all that started with you know, the many happy accidents that occur using the turpentine brush. And just to play this out a little further. Now here's a person, let's say they've got their arms crossed. And this isn't even the figure that I'm going to be doing in a moment, but I just wanted to show you how one thing can lead to another and a turpentine brush can be very helpful to cause these happy accidents. So I'll go ahead and give it the old two finger flick and uh, get rid of all these things and now I'm back at the starting so point. To begin my figures today I'm going to keep in mind uh, as I always do that those figures uh, occur at the horizon. In other words either the eyes of the person or the chin of a person, depending on how tall they are, will be at the horizon level. Yeah. Just remember that the horizon line is what makes all of this happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is be sure I'm at the very top of my layers. i am create up a new layer up here. And this frees me up. I don't have to worry about getting it wrong or anything. I can just really be loose. And I'm going to go back now to my turpentine brush. I've got black in there. Yeah, and I'm going to find about the right size. And here I go. It really is just a completely intuitive process. I'm going to put that person's head there. I'm going to start with a body here. And often by tipping the pencil, you can get an even broader point, at least in the turpentine brush. That helps you be very, or stay very gestural in what you're doing. So something's starting to happen here, but I don't know about that arm. Through the little bit of study that I've done watching YouTubes of figure drawings and stuff, I'm going to concentrate on getting the proportions somewhat right and I know that the getting the spine right is important too with these things. So it's a little darker than I normally work. Maybe I'll back off a little. Uh, putting one person there seems maybe a little lonely. It also seems like that person is, is bigger than I would want them to be ultimately and I can always adjust them. Uh, again, the beauty of being on their own layer, I can adjust them using the selection tool. So I'm going to go back in now. That person, I, I'm not quite sure which way they're looking yet or what their final pose will be. Uh, part of this is looking at these blobs and, and allowing them to suggest position to you. But it occurs to me that maybe an innocuous thing I could do is, is add another figure over here. Maybe it's he or she maybe is um, standing together, maybe let's say putting wait. sun lotion on them or something like that. Who knows? I'm not going to worry about it yet. But I want to get the head roughly right. I want to get the neck roughly right. I want to get the body position or the spine roughly right. This to me is already implying that maybe uh, maybe they're going to go swimming or go play tennis. Um, so they're in their, their clothes. It wouldn't be a very nice thing to have your arms crossed waiting for your partner. So let's not do that. Let's blank it out. But let's change it to, uh, I'm getting a vibe here where it looks like the one person is maybe applying sunblock to the other person. And that would mean that their their hand is open here. Arm. I'm now drawing the negative. I'm drawing the opposite. Uh, I'm pulling that a, a possible arm position out of the black that's already there. And you can see the hand. There's the open palm, and it's waiting for the goop to come out of there. So yeah. So I'm going to go with that. Try and fill these people out a bit more. And that seems to be a reasonable line. Maybe there's a shadow, and then there's the rest of the leg, and another bit of a shadow under the short, and a calf. Um, I did not know that I was going to start drawing a person putting sunblock on another person. So, And you'd be surprised at how often you uh, end up creating little stories for your characters as you're drawing them.
to get this into a comfortable place for my hand and I'm going to give it a shot now. I'm all ready to go with the gel pen. I'll double check that line. That line's a little too big, so maybe I'll come down here. Okay, and here goes. So I'm beginning to see uh, the outline of uh, uh, a cheek here. Again, just in that. Uh, and, and maybe it's a very short haircut. One big key to this is you don't want to necessarily have your strokes complete. By stopping every once in a while and starting again, uh, you can erase and go back without causing everything to disappear at one time. What I'm going to do is um, add an area of white, kind of a masking layer, behind these figures so that the figures, uh, you don't have the room showing through the figures. And I'm going to put it right here, just under the line drawing. And I'm going to change to um, white. And my next step is I'm going to go to the selection tool. And I'm actually going to trace uh, loosely around these people. And now double checking that I have created that layer. Yes, I did. I'm going to go back up and with white chosen, I'm just going to pull that white over and release it on that layer. And that will automatically fill that entire selected area. And now you can see that um, I can turn off the rough sketch that we did underneath. And you can see that those people are ready to go. Uh, once you get that white behind them, you can see how I can move them anywhere in the room and shrink them down. And uh, it would still give me a head start. I could even turn them and decide that I want them on this side of the room after all. Um, but I think my original intuition was correct, that they belong over here. So I'm just going to cancel out everything and take them back and we'll start from there. Now these renderings did not have any shading but for the purpose of this exercise I will show you how I generally shade these figures and again the trick is to be between the line drawing and the white background so I will create a new layer here and in this case I will switch to what I use for this generally which is the round brush I'll stay in black because I can always lighten up the opacity later here. I'll pick a general size because uh, remember it's on its own layers so I can always erase where I go over and that is very liberating. So, And I'm going to imagine that there's a highlight uh, along the um, edges of their arms and their torsos on the same side as the uh, bright outdoors and the overhead light. So here goes that using the round brush. <clears throat> so I'm concentrating on two kinds of uh, shade and shadow. One is what I would call the, the shade on the uh, side of a, a surface that's away from the light. That's what I'm generally putting on now. So that has a way of making the, the big moves that you need when you're trying to figure out how to shade and shadow these characters. And again I'm being very loose about it, trying to stay consistent with uh, the kind of looseness of the architectural design. So once I get the, um, what I would call the shade done, I'm going to give this guy much darker hair. The last thing I'm going to do is uh, add the shadow, and that's really the fun part, because the shadow is what begins to give these things real depth. Because again, the, the key is not to distract from the architecture, but to just give just enough you don't want to distract from the drawing. You could stop right there, but I, let me go one more layer and uh, put some shadow in rather than shade. Okay. 
So that's really it. That's how I do people. I don't want them to become the most important part about this drawing. I want the architecture to remain the most important. And as I said at the beginning, the reason for using layers this way is because you can then select that group and you can correct it if you've made the figures too big or if you'd like to move them somewhere else in the composition. Thanks for watching.